Welcome to the Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021 meeting of the Town of Corte Madera Planning Commission. Adam, would you please call the roll? Good evening. Uh, I sure will. Uh, Commissioner uh, Metcalf. Here. Commissioner Bundy. Here. Commissioner Chase. Here. Commissioner Bendel. Here. Commissioner Rizzo. Here. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time of every meeting, we open it up to public comment for that which is not on tonight's agenda. If you have something you wish to say that is not a part of this meeting tonight, then you have three minutes to say so. Um, I'll open it up and see if Tracy has any hands up for this part of the meeting. I'm checking here and I, I don't see any hands raised and I have um, no email has been received uh, at public comment at tcml.org. Okay. So with that said, your time is up and we will close the public comment section of tonight's agenda. Thank you very much. Um, tonight we have a public hearing. Uh, I'm gonna read this off and then we have some other actions to take. It is a public hearing for 21 Buena Vista Avenue, a design review uh, application uh, for a residential addition totaling 1,698 square feet and a variance application to waive the second required parking space at 21 Buena Vista Avenue. Mr. Rizzo, are you going to uh, recuse yourself here? Yes, I'm gonna recuse myself. Okay, Mr. Rizzo is um, the architect for tonight's project and he will take himself out of the uh, commission platform and he will sign in under a uh, spectator, as I understand it. That's my understanding as well. Uh, Peter, this is Tracy speaking and Anne can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'll, I'll move Jim to an attendee um, where um, he'll be able to have his camera off. That yes, Tracy, you're gonna move me. I don't need to log in and log in. I mean, log. Correct. Log okay. It'll, you. it'll rejoin you. That's the correct procedure. As far as far as the Brown Act covers this sort of meeting, that is. Okay. We'll wait for Tracy to accomplish that. There. Alrighty. It's done. Complete. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. So this item tonight, 21 Buena Vista Avenue, um, is under the uh, uh, oversight of senior planner, Martha Photography. Yes, I will start sharing my screen. Everyone see my screen? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Good evening, Chair Chase and members of the commission. This evening, you will be considering a design review application for 1,698 square foot addition and a variance application to waive the second required parking space at 21 Buena Vista Avenue. The applicants also propose to construct a 797 square foot attached accessory dwelling unit that will be integrated into the lower level of the residence. And consistent with state law and the town's ADU ordinance, the proposed ADU will not be reviewed as part of the design review application. The project site is located within the Chapman Park neighborhood. It is accessed from Buena Vista Avenue. There is one single family home located adjacent to the project site at 17, oops, sorry, at 17 of Buena Vista Avenue. Located south of the project site is 23 Buena Vista Avenue, which is a vacant parcel. There was a, a home on this property that uh, had a severe fire in the late 90s, and the town subsequently issued a demo permit for that structure, and a house has never been reconstructed on that parcel since that time. And located east of the project site across Buena Vista Avenue are additional single family homes. The project site is developed with an, an existing two-story structure. The lower level includes a, a single car garage and hall space. And the living area is located on the upper floor. And it's just over 900 square feet of living area. Marin maps list the average slope at 16%. The majority of slope occurs in both the front and the rear of the property. And the areas where the addition are proposed are relatively flat. 
So the picture on the left-hand side shows the existing front elevation uh, taken from Buena Vista Avenue. On the upper right-hand side of the screen is the south side yard setback. This is the area located between the, um, the residence and the property to the south at 23 Buena Vista Avenue. And on the lower right-hand side is the view of the deck, the rear deck, and also the, the, the backyard. And it's taken from the southern portion of the rear yard. The project site is zoned R1, medium density residential. The proposed primary residence is consistent with the uh, majority of development standards with the exception of parking for which a variance has been requested. The existing north side yard setback is four feet, 10 inches where five feet was required. And in 1970, when the uh, primary structure was constructed, there was also a variance application that was approved that allowed the two inch encroachment into that setback. And the proposed uh, third story of the residence meets the five foot setback. Consistent with state law, the town's AD ordinance allows for both the exceedance of 800 square foot exceedance of lot coverage and floor area ratio for purposes of constructing an ADU. The proposed lot coverage for both the primary residence and the ADU is below the maximum 40% for the lot. And the proposed uh, floor area ratio is compatible with the ADU ordinance and that the exceedance of floor area is 735 square feet where 800 square feet is allowed. The proposed uh, front yard setback is 15 feet, where 15 feet is required. And it appears uh, that there's actually a larger front setback than this. And this is due to the fact that Buena Vista Avenue is a, has a width of 30 feet and a 50 foot easement. And the distance from the edge of the, the roadway to the front property boundary is over 17 feet. The proposed south side yard setback is five feet. The proposed rear yard setback is just over 39 feet, where 25 feet is required. And again, the existing residence has a setback of four feet and inches. There are two large oak trees on the property that will be maintained. In the front of the property, there is a 57 inch circumference oak tree. And in the rear of the property, there's a 63 inch circumference oak tree. And I've shown these oak trees, um, the green circles on the site plan. As part of the project, the applicant proposes to expand the driveway from 16 feet to 20 feet. And in order to accommodate this, uh, some vegetation located north of the existing driveway will be removed. And in addition, a retaining wall will also be removed. The applicant will be constructing a low level retaining wall in the front setback. And this new retaining wall has a maximum height of three feet, and it'll match the existing retaining walls in the front setback. And the applicant is also proposing um, permeable pavers and some new landscaping in the front yard. There is an existing privacy screen located along the northern property boundary, and the applicant is also proposing some additional vegetation in this portion of the site. The proposed floor plan of the first floor consists of crawl space, uh, the garage, which is 334 square feet and is not being increased in size. And there's some additional living area proposed on the new the first floor, which includes an entry, a hallway, stairs and storage, and a laundry room. In addition, the ADU is also um, shown here on the first floor plan, and it's shown in brown. The proposed uh, second floor um, is just over 1,800 square feet. It includes a, a great room, a kitchen, a master suite with a closet and a bathroom, a guest room, and a bathroom. And the proposed third floor um, is, is just over 700 square feet. And of that, only a portion of floor area is included. Only a portion of that square footage is included in floor area. And only areas that have a ceiling height of seven and a half feet or more are included in the floor area. And this floor includes uh, two bedrooms, a bathroom, and a loft. The proposed project is a 1,698 square foot addition. It includes a 39 square foot addition on the lower level, a 916 square foot addition on the existing second floor, and a new third floor, which is 743 square feet. The majority of additional square footage is being added to the rear of the property facing uh, the, west, the west elevation facing the rear of the property. 
The project repurposes the existing foundation, it minimizes site work and grading, and it preserves the existing uh, large oak trees on the site. And you can see one of the, the oak trees um, on the, the rendering on the left. Um, the proposed materials for the project include fiber cement siding painted gray, white trim, dark gray composition shingle, uh, shingles, aluminum clad entry door and windows, repurposed hardwood decking, and stainless steel cable railing. The east elevation faces Buena Vista Avenue. As part of the project, the applicant is proposing a new uh, entry with a covered porch. Uh, this elevation includes uh, three dormers in, on the third floor. And the maximum height of this elevation is 27 feet and 11 inches. The north elevation faces the neighbor to the north at 17 Buena Vista Avenue. The maximum height of this elevation is 26 feet, eight inches. The applicant is proposing three windows on the lower level and consistent with the town's ADU ordinance, the applicant obtained a written approval from their neighbor to have non-clair story windows on this elevation. The second floor includes seven windows and two of these windows are set on, back on a wall plane that's approximately 30 feet from the property boundary. And the third floor includes a multi-pane window. The south elevation faces the vacant parcel. This elevation includes the entry doors on the ADU on the lower level, um, eight windows on the second floor, which are all um, fairly modest in size, and two windows on the upper elevation. And this elevation um, has a maximum height of 23 feet, three inches. The west elevation faces the rear of the property. The lower level ADU includes two, two windows and a door. Extensive glazing is proposed on the second floor to take advantage of the views out of the rear of the property. And there's also um, a deck on this elevation as well. And then three dormers are proposed um, on the third floor. And the maximum height is 29 feet. There are story poles that were constructed and the story poles uh, were certified by a surveyor. The picture on the left is of the, the front elevation from Buena Vista Avenue. And the picture on the right is the south elevation taken from the, the vacant parcel. As part of the project, the applicant reached out to their neighbors. They provided a letter to all of their neighbors that included a project description, a rendering and the color material board. The applicant also met with their neighbor at 17 Buena Vista Avenue and they walked around the project site and discussed uh, screening between the two properties. And the applicants will be installing additional vegetation along that northern border with consultation from their neighbor. The applicant reached out to the owner of 23 Buena Vista Avenue and sent two certified letters and they did not hear back from that neighbor. And the owners did receive letters of support from the majority of neighbors. Um, all the neighbors that provided a letter of support are shown in blue on this map. The project also includes a, a variance request to waive the second required parking space and allow the site to maintain its existing original configuration of non-conforming parking. The parking requirement for the site is two parking spaces, one of which must be covered and the second space cannot be located in the front step back. The special circumstances that exist are the lot size, the topography, and the distance from the roadway to the front property boundary. There is a discussion of the special circumstances in both the staff report and the resolution, and I'm happy to answer any questions that the commission may have. In order to approve the project, the planning commission must make the required design review and variance findings. Staff is able to make these findings, and there's a, a discussion in the staff report and the resolution, and I can answer any questions related to them. And staff recommends that the planning commission adopt Resolution 21004, approving design review application CL 2021-0007 and variance application CL 2021-0009 for residential addition totaling 1,600, sorry, 1,698 square feet and a variance to waive the second required parking space at 21 Buena Vista Avenue. That concludes staff presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Martha. Thank you very much. Um, 
I would like to um, ask the commissioners before we proceed, uh, if because of the unusual circumstances here, if anybody had had a discussion with the uh, commission member, uh, Jim Rizzo, regarding this project prior to considering the project or during the consideration of the project. Does everyone want to know? I haven't. No. no. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, it's an unusual situation, but um, <clears throat> we're all objective. So I will start with you, Phyllis. Do you have any questions for staff regarding this application? Yes, it's uh, more of a general question than just this particular application. Since the four foot 10 inch is grandfathered in, on the uh, side setback instead of five feet. How come the uh, variance that was given for the garage before uh, having just one parking space that, that that doesn't get grandfathered in as this house has some changes made? There's a, a standard in the zoning ordinance that states that whenever there's an addition of 120 square feet or more, that the property needs to be brought into conformance with parking. Um, so that was the, the, the trigger for, for needing to um, either meet parking or apply for a variance to allow the existing non-conforming parking situation to continue. Okay, fine, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Margaret, do you have any questions for staff? Well, to continue that parking question, so, Ordinarily, this uh, permit would require, or this review would require two covered parking spots, is that correct? So uh, of the two required parking spots, the, the second space can be uncovered. However, it cannot be located in the, in the front yard setback. And does the ADU, the idea of the ADU there, um, require an additional parking spot? It does not. The ADU is located within a half mile of a transit stop. So a, a parking space is not required for the ADU. So what the, um, what the proposal is, is to, to have two off-site, off, two uncovered parking spots in a driveway. Correct. And one in but both of the uncovered parking spots would encroach on the public right of way? Yes, they're located mainly on the, the private property, but they do extend a little bit um, into the, the right of way. And how much is a little bit? Um, probably about two feet. Two feet? Mm -hmm. And how, how wide is the sidewalk there? Um, well, so the distance, so the, there's, over 16 or 17 feet between the, the roadway and the front property line. So the spaces, it looks like it's the, the applicant's driveway that they're on. They don't get anywhere near the, the sidewalk. And, and one other question, the front, um, the, uh, the rendering of the front facade of the building, and I'm just checking this, to be sure, the proposal is to have, yeah, it looks like the garage is as big as, or smaller than the front entrance. Is that correct? Um, they look pretty from rendering pretty comparable as far as um, width. I can have the architect provide um, what those dimensions are when, when she speaks as well. I think that um, the existing garage is staying pretty much the shape it is and the size it is. Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. Anything else, Margaret? No, nope, that's it. Okay. Dr. Bundy, questions for staff? Uh, just, uh, I guess, a question of understanding uh, in I think it's nice that uh, they've been able to incorporate an ADU uh, into this new structure. I was looking at the entrance to it, which is on the, uh, it looks like it goes around the north side of the building 
and across the back. And I could see where it, the entrance uh, went into the bedroom, but I didn't, couldn't tell on the drawings whether the path, pathway extended around the building to the uh, south side where the uh, sort of living room entrance is located and where the address is uh, located. So there, there is a pathway from the right of way um, to the, the rear of the property. Um, and then there are the two doors are proposed on the ADU, one on um, the south elevation and then another one on the, the west elevation, the rear elevation. So from the, the front, someone could at walk to either of those entrances. Okay, maybe James can walk me uh, through that uh, just as a point of information. I know uh, we're not uh, really critiquing the ADU, but this was just a point of interest for me. Okay. So um, are there any neighbors besides the vacant lot that did not approve this uh, application? I think there was one other um, neighbor that didn't send a letter of support on the map. Looks like um, but they all did. in between 40 and 32, there's a residence that did not submit uh, uh -huh. a letter and the, we did not receive any, any comments um, from anyone on this. Okay. And that residence is uphill up Buena Vista yes. further, right? Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. So at this point, um, we'll uh, ask for the presentation by the applicant uh, to uh, tell us about their application. So Tracy, who's going to do that for them? It's going to be the homeowners and then also um, one of the architects, Joyce McCarran, also is available for questions. It's, um, Thank you, Martha. Yeah. If you want to turn on your camera. Oh. Hello. There we go. Hello. Hello. We got the whole head family here. <laughs> I'm Marin. I'm Brian. This is Charlie. He's tired. And our golden retriever is Somewhere probably in time. the kitchen. So, uh, <laughs> uh, first of all, we wanted to just thank you. Um, thank the commissioners for your time and review of our application. We um, are, I guess you could call us a new family to Corte Madera. We moved here about three and a half years ago um, and we just, absolutely love this neighborhood. We love our community. And as you can see, we have a growing family. Uh, this is our firstborn. Um, he turned seven months tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so sleepless nights over the past seven months have led us to realize that we need a bigger space. Our current house is, um, I, I would say it's a one floor house. I mean, it looks like two floors from the exterior, but we have no connecting stairwell. So we are really sequestered to this one story. It's about a thousand square feet up here. Um, Which feels me. very small in a year of working from home, yeah. as you can imagine. So uh, with the birth of Charlie, we really were seriously considered moving. Um, we, we just needed more space. We need more space. So we said to ourselves, okay, let's assess where we could live, where we could move. And financial things aside, it it really dawned on us that we love our neighborhood. We love our neighborhood, our, our, our neighbors. They're all amazing people. Um, and I think on top of that, we just love Corte Madera. We love living here. So we can't see ourselves moving. And we decided that we would rather, um, you know, dig in and do what feels like the hard thing, which is to do this renovation um, for the benefit of ourselves and our and our neighbors, we you know we just want to stay here. We just love it too much. Um, along with that, with with COVID and with the situation we're all in, we need working space. You know, we need more space to do our 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 jobs. And and both of us work remotely um, for companies here in the Bay Area. Uh, so a lot of our jobs are done. Um, Marin's office is in our bedroom and my office is down in the in the garage area so we we want to build in um, some office space for us um, and you know who knows what will happen with COVID but you know we're both people managers at the companies we work for and 
we we can see a future where the 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 reality of work environments have changed, right? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, so we have we, we anticipate working more from home than we ever did before into the future, and so our companies are aligned that way. So hence the need for a bigger space, um, not only for our family but for working. Did I miss anything there? No, I think that's right. And so when we, when I was nine months pregnant, we started working with a realtor to actually go through the process of listing our house um, because we needed to upgrade. And through that process, we were introduced to Jim Rizzo uh, to actually design some ideas and concepts that we could provide to potential buyers of what this house could look like. Um, that's how we met Jim. Uh, and through that process, and, and as what Brian was saying, we realized quickly that especially with this little guy, in a couple of years from now, we're going to want to be going down to the town park. We're going to want to be hanging out in front of Cafe Verde and playing with friends. So we kind of took a, a, a sharp turn and a small scope project kind of started to turn into a rather substantial one. Um, and that's how we kind of started to build out this idea of a, of a much larger home that we could live in for, for a while. Exactly. Um, so that's our background. And when we went to, to, to design this house, our number one priority was to have it blend in with the neighborhood. We, we, we wanted to, we, I mean, we respect our neighbors so much that we, we actually really considered their thought process and um, talked with them each individually. And we wanted to build a house that fit in with the neighborhood didn't disrupt the environment we're in. Um, we have some, we're lucky to, enough to have a beautiful situation around us, including our, our big oak trees. So we wanted to build a house that didn't encroach on those trees. Um, and more importantly, just didn't represent like a giant pave over of any specific area. So um, we, we designed our neighbor, our, our, our house in that way. And, um, you know, really, we didn't want to change the exi existing topography of where we live. Uh, we, it, it's sort of hard to get a sense for it, I think, from the pictures, but um, we're in this wildland urban interface. Fire danger is a serious concern of ours. Brian actually spoke at the town council a couple of years ago um, when we were going through the fire abatement to make sure that we in our neighborhood was was a safe area because it is a concern of ours. Yeah. So when we were designing the house, we made sure to make sure that we had what cementation single shingles and made sure that our, our house was up to complete code and could protect our community. Yep. So we chose materials that protect us, hopefully. Um, and I think with, you know, saving you guys from a, you know, a 10 hour story that we could probably tell you about everything that we went into it. Um, I want to, I, Marin and I want to address the concerns that might exist for this project, like head on and our privacy, uh, the privacy between our neighbor, 17 Buena Vista, that they're the Ewart family was, um, important to us to consider. So we've been meeting with them face to face. We, you know, we talk with them and we, we're lucky to have a good relationship with them. And um, they've signed two letters of support for us, including the, um, I don't think it's technically considered a variance, but the clustery windows um, should be higher and they approved a lower um, a version of those windows. And we've, you know, more important than their, that a specific approval, we've agreed to build a privacy screen between us and work with them to joint design something. And um, it, it was a handshake and a signed agreement to do that. So number one, we wanted to make sure that they were comfortable with our design. And of course we wanted to also be comfortable. We didn't wanna be looking into them and they didn't wanna be looking at us. So um, we, we really wanted to make sure that that was, um, in, uh, okay with them and also the height of our building we wanted to make sure that it wasn't encroaching shadows onto their property so we reviewed the light studies that our architects did with them directly um, they had questions but no concerns um, and I think that's testament to our architects who helped design this house um, and then lastly the parking variance which I think is a important it's, a, it's the only variance that I, I think exists for our house and really when we when we view our front lawn we we didn't want to create this giant pavement structure put in a retaining wall 
um, and change like the reality of our front yard. And it jeopardize you, those two oak trees in the front. Exactly. Uh, the, the oak trees have deep roots. Marin and I, um, we planted our own landscape a couple of years ago as, you know, roll up our sleeves, which <laughs> ended 99 up- 99 plants and it almost broke our marriage. It almost but. broke, <laughs> yeah, and it might've been a little too much. Um, the point is, is that our front yard is, is, is open and we didn't want to pave it over to create parking. And that's why we've applied for this variance for parking. Um, I think that and the fact that we're adjacent to a vacant lot means that there's not a lot of cars that pile up near our house and we're lucky to have that. So um, that's where we were coming from there. Um, let's see, in the interest of time, I think we can draw the line there the last thing I wanted to say is when we designed our house, we wanted to keep it to a, um, a, we didn't want to have this giant towering house. And that was a concern of ours. And we considered two story designs closely with our architect. We landed on this third story um, design with the dormers, how it is today because of uh, views because of the impact to the oak tree in the back of our lot, we didn't want to encroach on that. Um, but we wanted our, we, we specifically um, wanted our architect to design sort of a minimalistic third story. So instead of having a blocky squared off top, we really liked the idea of having the, 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 the pitched um, gable with the dormers. Um, so it's meant to be two stories with like kind of a built-in attic. Exactly. So. The only other thing that I would just quickly add is in terms of the ADU. Um, so, you know, it's important to us. I'm an only child. Uh, Brian's parents live in, in Colorado. Actually, both of our parents are dialed into this call right now. Um, it was important to us to build out a space for them to move in in case um, we needed to support them um, as, as we continue to live here. We're very fortunate that our, our family is, is very healthy. Um, and so that is a great thing, but we are kind of future proofing to ensure that we can support um, our parents as they get older and as we get older. Yep. Um, and so that is why we had built out the ADU for that intention. Yeah, and the, obviously the ADU isn't under um, review for this specific proposal. Um, so we, we don't want to dive too deep into that, but we don't have any intention of um, renting this ADU or making it an Airbnb or anything like that. Uh, it's really designed to be a backup space for what Marin just said. So um, anything else that we missed? Hi, mom and dad. Hi, yeah, our, our parents <laughs> are on this call, so we just want to say, hey, mom, hey, dad. And uh, thank you very much for considering All right. the proposal. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, long description there. So um, we'll ask uh, who's going to make the presentation further for you. Anybody on the architectural side? I think um, Joyce McCarran, who's an associate with um, the Rizzo Associates, uh, might uh, will, will represent us in that regard. OK, thank you. Um, Martha, is that true? Joyce will join us here? Yes, Joyce. There she is. Find on. There we go. I'm on. I, I don't have any specific presentation to make. I'm here for questions. All right. So with that said, um, I will then turn to the commissioners and ask them if they have any questions of you or they had. So I will start with Phyllis and see if she has any questions for you. I don't have any questions at this time. Okay. Margaret, do you have any questions for the homeowners or for the architect? Well, just the, the question that I had before is, is what's the relationship in size of the, the garage to the front entry? It uh, looked to me like the front entry was bigger than the size of the garage. Is, is well, it, the, garage, the garage door is, the, the size of the garage door is staying the same size as it was, but if you go from the, uh, the, the columns at the covering the the entry porch over to where the um, the master bedroom uh, is you, you have it's it's smaller it's nine foot four and three quarters for the entry porch and it's eleven foot nine and a half for the you know the space between the column and the the wall that comes out is that what you're asking 
Well, I didn't quite understand what you said. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, the, the entry porch is smaller than the space between the entry porch and the, because you have space on either side of the garage door. Uh, it, do, it, it doesn't really look like that in the rendering. So that's why I was asking. Okay. Um, but I okay. think, uh, Margaret, the, the surround of our entryway looks bigger than obviously the actual door. The, the garage, we didn't want to change um, for design reasons, but also uh, it's, it's the existing structure of our house that it's hard to tell, but that little alley where you look at our garage represents a foundation that's set. So we didn't want to minimize our, the impact. We didn't want to change the width of our, our garage because it would require demolishing the, the foundation there and the slab that's there today. So it is the same size as it is today and it, we plan on keeping it the same size. Okay. All right. Anything else, Margaret? Okay. Dr. Bundy. Do you have any questions for these folks? Uh, yeah, just a couple thoughts in regard to the vacant lot. I think it's great that you have this space next to you. It's really quite a large lot uh, going down to the drainage swale below. And was just uh, wondering if you had had an arborist look at the trees on that property to see that they wouldn't threaten your new home. And also, does uh, someone maintain that or mow that regularly so that it isn't a fire hazard to your home? Great question. You wanna, so. Yeah, so um, we have had a, a few arborists actually attend to our oak trees uh, to, and, and the existing vegetation to ensure that fire um, threat is, is minimized. We haven't had an arborist look at the trees over on the vacant parcel. Um, I think as Martha had had stated, we, we reached out to the vacant parcel owner twice through certified mail and never heard anything back. Um, and yeah, else? well, I, uh, Dr. Bundy, I think your question is like about fire, right? Um, yes. This, this particular um, vacant lot is a blessing. And I would say very little bit of a curse um, because actually the risk of fire of this particular site has impacted our neighbors with insurance and fire insurance. Luckily, because of Corte Madera's recent, I think it was last year or the year before, they did a fire abatement of uh, vacant lots. This lot actually um, went into a review by the town and by the fire marshal for uh, the, the owner of this property apparently wasn't maintaining it to the town's standards, to the fire marshal's standards. And so they actually abated the property to cut back the trees and cut back the, um, you know, the short vegetation, grasses and the yeah. vegetation. But to your question directly, we have not had an arborist look at it, obviously, because it's their private property and their trees don't encroach on our, um, like over our property line. So it is a sense of, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a sore spot for the neighborhood because we're concerned about fire. Uh, but luckily, because of the town, they did abate it, and um, you know they might need another abatement in the next year or two. Who knows? Good. the uh, The other question I had, and uh, this would be, I guess, for the architect. In looking at the uh, the new, this is a new gas fireplace that you're having installed. Is that correct? Yes. It it seemed like the the chimney was much taller than would be necessary for a gas fireplace. It looked like the height that you would have if it was a wood burning fireplace, which we don't allow uh, anymore in uh, a new home or major remodel. Uh, so was, is that really the, the, the code or was there aesthetic reason for that? Or uh, you know, was just that decision on uh, how to design it? Uh, it, the decision was because of the, um, it is a gas fireplace, but it was, we based it on the, the height of a wood burning uh, chimney. Um, and if we, if we can bring it down, we would love to, <laughs> but we were uh, basing it on the, the code for that. Oh, that's, that's interesting. I thought uh, the uh, requirements for the gas burning fireplaces uh, didn't have those same height requirements as a wood burning, but uh, so I've learned something tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the only question uh, 
uh, or only thoughts that uh, that I have on that. I think it's a uh, nicely designed uh, home, and you've uh, got a lot of space in it without uh, creating too much bulk. Okay, thank you, Bob. Um, after hearing all of that, I'm just going to ask um, Phyllis if she has any questions after all of that. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, I do not have any questions for any of you. So thank you very much. Um, and we will then now go open it up to public comment for the hearing. So if you are uh, in the mood to make a public comment about this project, we'll open it up now. You have three minutes to make your comment. I have a timer here and we'll do so if you raise your hand or you uh, email in to public comment at tcmmail.org. Uh, thank you, Chair Chase. Um, I don't see any attendees with raised hands. I'll, I'll go ahead and check for emails while we wait to see if anyone does decide to raise a hand. Again, that email address for those attendees on tonight is public comment at tcmail.org if you wish to comment but don't wish to speak. I'll be happy to read it into the record. Don't, I don't see any emails, uh, nor are there any raised hands. Okay, so there doesn't appear to be anyone wanting to chime in on this. So we'll close the public comment section of this meeting or this hearing and take it to uh, back to the commissioners to uh, opine on their uh, on this application. So I'll start with you, uh, Margaret, and see what your thoughts are on this application. Um, I think it's a really nicely designed addition. I think it's done really well. I think it fit, does fit into the neighborhood. And I think everyone knows I don't like tall additions, but this one is done, I think, really beautifully. The only concern I have is for parking. When I drove up that street, it's one of those streets that's fairly narrow. People park on both sides. I always have concerns about uh, if uh, can fire engines fit up there? Can fire engines turn around? Can people get in and out? if there is a fire, um, that's the only concern I have. If the fire chief is not, uh, has looked at it and said it's okay, then, then I'll just take his word for it. Um, but that's the only concern I have there. And, and as I said before, I think it's one of the uh, nicest additional story houses that I've seen since I've uh, sat in this chair. Thank you, Margaret. Appreciate that. Um, Dr. Bundy, your thoughts? Uh, a nice project. Uh, the issue with the variance for the parking, I think uh, the sort of additional space that is out there between the uh, curb and the house uh, does not, uh, is not gonna make it appear that uh, people are in the public right of way or parking is in the public right of way. So I can make the uh, findings uh, for this. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Phyllis. I like the house. I think it's a very good design. It fits into the neighborhood. And as far as the parking goes, there really is no change in the sense that the ADU is there, but it's not going to be rented out. And I am assuming that uh, the heads are a two car family at this time. So uh, they're gonna still be a two car family and it's worked and yet that space is gonna be what, four feet wider, I think. What was it from 16 to 20 feet? Did you say Martha? Yeah. So I don't have to open the big plans. So I don't have any problem with that. I think as I said that it's been very nicely designed. The windows all seem to be put in ways that are not interfering with that one neighbor who's close and you've worked something out with them for the clear story windows and some kind of, a, I guess, a plant with trees or planting of some sort to have some separation, which would be a lot nicer looking than having a fence. 
a tall one. So I certainly could make the findings and would be happy to make a motion when the time comes. Thank you, Paula. Um, I would agree with the three of you that this is well designed. I think that the optimization of square footage is remarkable here and uh, craftily done. I think that um, the elevations with the bump outs and the dormers uh, really is uh, an added attraction to the, the basic box that the house could be without those things. So it's, it's they're well placed, well done, and I think that this will be a, a welcome addition to the neighborhood. Uh, I'm glad to see an ADU going in, and um, the parking, you're going to need it for a babysitter. So there you go. I have that. Um, oh, so, but if they go out, one car will leave when the babysitter comes, Peter. There you go. All right. Um, being that we all seem to be in unanimous uh, agreement here, do I hear a motion for this uh, application? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll make the motion. In the matter of design review application PL-2021-0007, DRC for a residential addition totaling 1,698 square feet and variance application PL-2021-0009 to waive the second required parking space at 21 Buena Vista Avenue. And this is resolution 21 004. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Margaret. Mr. Wolf, would you care to call the roll on this? Mm. Or Commissioner Bundy? Yes. Commissioner Mendel? Yes. Vice Chair Metcalf? Yes. And Chair Chase? Chairman Chase? Uh, yes. And Martha, it's your job to read. Yes, there is. Uh, the, anyone can appeal the decision of the Planning Commission within 10 calendar days, and there's a $300 filing fee to do so. And application forms are available uh, with the Planning Department. Well, thank you very much. Um, good luck and Godspeed. Uh, <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. We thank appreciate you. your time. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with it. Have a good night. Bye. Okay, Mr. Rizzo can rejoin us. Thank you. Should be joining us shortly. There he is. There he is. Okay. So it is time for commissioner reports. Dr. Bundy. The uh, last uh, town council meeting was uh, really devoted uh, primarily uh, to the selection of a new council member. And it's quite interesting, they uh, rejected the most qualified technically, which was Jim Andrews, the former council member. And they also rejected the most qualified, that being Phyllis Metcalf, in favor of uh, a fresh face. Uh, but somebody that uh, has been involved in the home key project and, uh, you know, wanted to step up uh, and do something more for the council. And, and uh, it really was uh, uh, not, nothing of, of great significance, I don't think, unless I missed something, Adam. Don't be afraid to uh, opine there, Bob, about that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, yeah, no, I, I think it was, we had, I think the other headline was just that there were 11 applicants um, and, and many um, well-qualified applicants. And so I think that that was, uh, council seemed very pleased with that. And I know Todd was, and, and Rebecca as well, um, were pleased to see so many people expressing their interest in joining the council. Okay, so then, uh, Adam, do you have anything to uh, report? Um, I only just have a couple of, so go ahead. Oh. You know. oh. Uh, I was gonna talk about uh, a Zoom meeting I attended uh, with uh, David Voutin. Am I saying his name right, Adam Voutin? 
from a bag uh, yeah Vaughton. yep Vaughton. Vaughton. i wasn't a bag close. mtc and uh he gave a very interesting he spoke for about an hour going over what a bag is doing why it is doing it how it is doing it i know bob had signed up for it too i don't know if he was able to watch it or not but it is on tape and if anybody has the time is interested in seeing it, let me know and i will give you the information so you can watch it. But I think I really learned more about what they are doing. I still may not like it, but at least now I understand more of it. I can accept more of it and see what they're trying to achieve and how they're trying to do it. And Adam has heard him before at other times. He may want to add on to that. That's great. And, and, and that, yeah, that Dave is, is the leading the Plan Bay Area 2050 um, project for ABAG MTC. And he does, I think, do a very good job of being able to explain all the, the jargon and the complex sort of policy stuff that they, they, they do. Um, but I, that is separate and apart in, in a lot of ways from the RENA process, which is more of the housing requirement process where we have to do eight-year cycles. Although the arena, we argued this in the letter, is supposed to be consistent with the, the plan and is required by state law that it's consistent with the plan. So that's how those two different sort of uh, planning um, programs are related to each other. Okay, so I don't know, the result was, uh, what did you get from him about his when Bay Area 2050? What would you say that was? Um, it was an explanation of it, an understanding of what they are doing and why and what they're trying to achieve. As I say, I may not like all of it, but I can accept it because I understand what they're striving for. Parts of it I can agree with, parts of it I don't. I'm always very concerned when people do a lot of talking about creating rental housing. I think it's a mistake that's repeated over and over and over again. And I'm not saying we should have rental housing, but I think we are gonna to have to put some emphasis on home ownership. And there are ways to do home ownership that it is affordable and that's what hasn't been looked at. I've been in touch with uh, Wiener's office up in Sacramento, and also uh, Mike McGuire is looking at some ideas that I've shared before with you to see what can be done, because I don't think we should ignore it. And, you know, there has to be balance. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Phyllis. Anybody else have anything to uh, report on? No. Okay. I'll just make a couple of just more of scheduling and just announcements of it, uh, for the next um, couple meetings, I guess. I, I think you, just to note on the agenda, you'll see that it looks like we will be seeing the continuation of the 22 ebb tide um, uh, project to the next meeting, which, um, you know, uh, we'll, it's a good sign, but we'll, we'll just wait and see. There's still some more communication that needs to happen on that, but they have been in discussion. So we're looking forward to seeing that application potentially back. Um, and Phil will be in communication with you about that if, if they put up story polls uh, next week. Um, I will be out um, actually next week. So um, please just, if you need to get a hold of uh, staff, please reach out to Martha or you can always get a hold of me, actually, but but um, reach out to Martha or or Phil or Tracy with any with any needs that you have next week. Um, and next month, um, I think you have all seen. Uh, I believe Martha sent out an email uh, that we are going to try to have the joint um, objective design and development standards working group and planning commission meeting, the second meeting in April. So I just want to mark that for your calendars. I think we're we're hoping to get a lot of um, a lot of members of the public to come because we're sort of joining and we're going to bill it as a 
as a good opportunity for the public to learn about objective design and development standards. The consultant will be there to help explain it uh, and answer questions. Uh, Opticos, uh, you know, Tony um, and Tony Perez and, and uh, Stefan Pellegrino from Opticos Design. Um, Dave Javid from Plan to Place will help facilitate some of the discussion as well. Um, and so that's the second meeting in April, April 27th. And just going back to the home key for a minute, um, there will be a community forum for any Q&A questions. Um, just the working group um, is going to be providing just some information um, and trying to bring the community into the conversation that we're having as part of the working group. Uh, that's going to happen on April 19th. I believe at uh, 6 or 7 p.m., but it's going to be, those are all things in our newsletters that come out on Friday. So uh, just be on the lookout for that. We have plenty of time to announce those and, and sort of continue to generate some interest in those meetings. And uh, that's really all I have for now. Um, and I, other than I think the message from today was that we're going to be moving into the, um, what is it, the orange, are we already in orange? No, orange tier tomorrow, I believe. Yeah. So um, continuing to make progress on that front, which is um, obviously exciting, but still everybody needs to, you know, do their, their social distancing and mask wearing as well. And so, uh, but I know our business community is very excited about that as well. Um, and I saw somebody shared, I think council member Lee, if you all, he shared with me a article on the RH gallery that was in Forbes magazine, the, the, uh, restaurant was reviewed and, and got very high marks and they had a nice picture of the atrium with the Mount Tam view and Forbes. So that was kind of neat to see. And that's all I got. All right. Well, that's quite a bit. All right. Thank you very much. Um, we have to approve the minutes for the March 23rd meeting. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve. Second. All right. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, unless somebody has something of significance, there's only 11 people participating in the meeting, so there's a mystery guest out there somewhere um, besides the 10 of us. So, um, I will say let's adjourn this meeting. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. wait. I have yes. a question. <laughs> yes. So, at least I was lucky enough. <laughs> to get this um, a hard copy of the objective design and development standards. And I started reading it. Is there a Reader's Digest version? <laughs> I need the cliff notes. <laughs> I, you know, I, I understand and, and some of the statements are, you know, some of it's a lot of verbiage, which I'm having trouble with. Some of the statements are very straightforward and I really appreciate it. Like the purpose statement, I think is excellent and it really sheds some light on what the purpose of this is. But um, I, I think I need an outline or something. Is there something available that uh, sort of puts it in, uh, pieces that can be followed and then put together or? There currently is not, um, but that is something that, that we can work on putting together so that it's easier to understand and digest. Um, you know, obviously I think members of the community are probably gonna have similar comments. So, you know, it's our goal to make it as easy to understand as possible. And obviously it's a lot of really complex information so there are some challenges but um, you know we want to do what we can do to simpl simplify it and we do obviously have the ability to customize the toolkit as well um, so portions that you know any of you find really confusing or staff um, we can modify and take out sections um, to avoid confusion as well, well yeah and, and maybe that I'm is sorry. the customizing part of the whole deal perhaps the staff who are very familiar with 
the process or Phyllis too, who was instrumental as I understand it, could kind of um, take out the parts that really don't apply to Corte Madera because I realize this is for all of Marin County. And, and, but, but I'm kind of getting lost in the differences that are very finite between the urban this and urban that, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and if the staff could have a, a little more, uh, you know, cull it down a little, it would be, uh, I think, better to understand. Yeah. There yeah, are they're... some charts in there that show you each one and their drawings of how close the buildings are to each other that explain each of those zones. So it's fairly clear since I'm very visual, seeing that puts it in place for me. Now, I don't know if you're as visual as I am to find it, but there are at least one page and I think there's even more than one page that shows you what those areas, because I think the ones that will affect us are what, three, four, and five? Uh, Adam, I'm trying to remember, or Martha, was it? Yeah, so, four, four or five. Yeah, so it's it will be the, the T, T3s and T4s that we probably ultimately will end up adopting. There's two T5s that have much, are much denser and allow yeah. heights, you know, upwards, I think, of 75, 80 feet. So, yeah. you know, as part of the discussion at our the Planning Commission meeting in April, we're going to have a discussion about the mapping. And that'll kind of segue into which zones should be adopted in our toolkit that we ultimately adopt. It's sort of a, a kind of a roadmap of how to get through. First, you look at this, and then you look at the piece inside of this, and then you look at two pieces of, you know, kind of like that. Uh, we hear you, Margaret. I think that's a good comment. And we can, I, I agree, as part of the customization, we can work on that. Um, in terms of just creating something tailored more to Corte Madera. So um, that's a good suggestion. Well, that's gonna... the purpose. I felt that since we can no longer use a multi-unit subjective decisions, they have to be objective. We have to come up with the objective design pieces. But, you know, listening to Margaret's questions, and of course, I've worked with this for what eight, nine months, as have Martha and uh, Adam. Is one meeting enough? I mean, I don't want to have a six hour meeting, but if people need this, what is obvious to me is not the people who have not seen this before. And I'd rather have time to have it walked through by the consultant and Adam and Martha. So the community uh, understand along with all the members of the commission and it would help if the council heard it at the same time too. So everybody understands what has to be done and then maybe the next meeting decisions being made. I think it probably could be a two meeting kind of We'll I don't see. know. Um, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what we, we tried to have the last meeting on it, you know, so it, that was an explanation of what the toolkit was and why we were doing it. And, uh, you know, uh, the next meeting will be a further elaboration of that and trying to start to tailor, tailor it to um, Corte Madera. I think that, you know, these have all been widely noticed and publicized um, we'll, and They've been available to the public. The community chat, Cheryl Longinati, she did speak up today and she has, she's reading it. Um, we're getting a couple of people reading it and trying to understand it, so that's good. And hopefully we'll get a big turnout and we'll take it one step at a time. Let's just wait, you know, if, if we need more time, we, that's fine. You know, we don't, we don't wanna, um, but, but I think at some point it's, uh, it's a matter of just, we have to, we're going to have to move again in response to the state legislation. That's the first phase. That's all we're doing is trying to get something in place so that uh, we have something in place if somebody applies under the state legislation that requires us to do by right housing. So that's, that's why we sort of think it's, you know, hopefully that, that is the key message that gets people on board to sort of okay. move through it. And then, and then we, um, you know, obviously we can, 
always come back to it. And, and if we want to apply it elsewhere is where we, we need to make sure that we are all, everyone understands that we may have a, a bigger conversation on our hands. I mean, we'll likely have a, a big conversation on our hands anyways. I hope so. Um, but I, I hear you. It is a lot to get through and it's a lot to understand. And you're right. I think that the real challenge is they're, they're really creating a whole new construct or like a framework of how to think about um, zoning and development standards and design. Um, and you have to sort of really read it several times as Martha and I will tell you, we're, we're, we're doing it ourselves, right? So it's, it's not easy and it takes some time to sort of remember what this, the language, I think, the, you know, um, what is T3, what is T4, how does it relate to this and that and, and what comes with it? So we'll do it as much as we uh, have to, to make sure people at least, you know, get it. And that's the big point of the next meeting and at the end of April. Um, and maybe Adam, if, you, if you want, we can, we can put a, um, a, something on the agenda if we have time at the next meeting, just for Q and A, if that's helpful for the commissioners and, and maybe general public, just to sort of, maybe we can get some, some of those questions out ahead of time before the 27th, so. Well, my fear is, like you just said, it's been noticed, people, it's been it's talked about, et cetera. And um, not everybody's Cheryl on Naughty. And I, gonna... I'm thinking back to uh, one of the people who I think actually applied for the council. I read somewhere somebody was complaining that nothing was said about uh, the new city hall until it came before the council. And all of a sudden, this was saying, now I remember, I think it was two years ago, Peter, that you and I were at a meeting where people were marking things up that were pasted on the walls, where it was done in the beginning to see uh, how many stories you wanted, what designs, there were different parts of the room had different drawings and pictures. This has been going on for a couple of years and yet people are still saying, nobody told us about it. All of a sudden they're spending millions of dollars to build a new city hall. You're not, Phil, yes, you're not going to avoid that, Phyllis. I don't, I think that's just the nature of what we do. And you're, we're going to get those people who will say, where, how come they're, you're thrusting this upon us? And we've been at this for a year and a half and we're doing our best to notice it as, we, as best we can. We'll continue to do so. We'll publicize it in different ways. We'll make it sound more interesting than it actually is. I don't know. <laughs> we'll do, we'll have to throw, uh, you know, um, I think we are going to retitle it and rename it, rebrand it, and try to figure out how to get more people out. But at some point, you're right, we're still going to get those folks um, who uh, will say they've never heard of this before, and, and now we're, they're worried about it. But that's just the nature of what we do. So and we're going to have to... complained about the sign in front of uh, the community center that nobody told them there was going to be a change. And that had gone on meeting after meeting after meeting. Right, so we digress pretty far. Yes, here. we have. Thank so, you. Um, we need to rein it in and put an end to this. Uh, thank you, Lark. So, but I thank you guys for uh, bringing this to the table in such an interested manner. Um, I want to know where I can get a hard copy that I can tab oh, through. Okay. I'll I'll drop you off a copy, Peter. Thank you. I would appreciate that. We will not have one. I have one. It, it helps to have it. It's a big document. Yeah, it does. It's like this thick. Yeah. Bob, Bob, did you want a copy as well? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that, that'll that help. It is helpful to have it in hard copy. So I'll, I'll get well, you both a copy and drop it off at your, your house. Thank you so Margaret, much. colored sticky notes. Yeah, I have I have notes. See? Yeah, <laughs> if you use the colored sticky notes, it, you, know, you can track like what building you're kind of working because yes. you're going between yeah. the yeah. yeah i mean, I mean that's how i have to do it when i'm doing code analysis I don't know. It's yeah it's stressful to get through <laughs> i want to know who else is on this call <laughs> <laughs> i know we should so we should cut it short but but thanks and reach out um I, I think we will put something on the next agenda just to have it so we can discuss more okay thank you very much all right. With that said, I'm going to say good night to all and close this meeting. So good night. Adjourn.
Good night. Good night. Have a good evening. Good night.